we read there were 603,550 males over 20 in chapter 1 of the book of Numbers, and not one of them, with only two exceptions, was allowed into the promised land. And all for one reason. Not because of their idolatry. They were guilty of that. Or their murmuring, complaining. They were guilty of that. It was simply because of unbelief. A refusal to take God at his word. The two that were allowed in, you remember, were Caleb and Joshua, the only two senior citizens by this time in all of the land of Israel. Twelve spies were sent in. They came back, and we read that part of their report agreed. They all agreed that what God said about the land was true. They all agreed it was a land flowing with milk and honey, it was a land of broad valleys and rich farmland. It was just the kind of land that they would dream about as they traveled through that barren wilderness. But there was one thing. And the one thing was that there were giants in the land. There was an enemy there. And they said, we just aren't going to be able to do it. Oh, said so Joshua and Caleb, come on now. God's bigger than that enemy. He's able to do it. God gave them the opportunity of proving that. They were the only two who said, God can and will drive out the enemy before us if we let him. Now, 40 years has gone by. By this time, Caleb is 85 instead of 45. As he came into the land the first time, God said, now these are the only two who believed I could do it, so I'm going to let them prove it. And so they came into the land, and the Lord says, now, Caleb, what do you want? Says, I want that mountain right there. Which one? Oh, this one here, Hebron. Well, why? Well, that's where the giants live, the sons of Anak. And I want to prove it. That just as surely as God would have driven out the enemy before us 40 years ago, he'll do it today. And so, away he went. And woe betides any giant that came across Caleb's path that day. And the Bible teaches us that of all the land that was given to the children of Israel, about the only land that really had rest was the land round about Caleb's inheritance. He cleaned them out. There wasn't one left. Why, was Caleb any different? Caleb's secret of success is the same as we have in chapter 1 of Joshua. He said, I wholly followed the Lord. There had probably been in excess of 1.2 million funerals since the last time they had seen the land of Canaan. And every one of those people could have entered into the land. There was provision enough for them, and there was power enough for them. But the weakness lay in their own unwillingness to obey God. Let God be God. Let him prove himself in your daily life. You see some giant in your life, and you say, Well, I can't, I can't defeat this giant. And we start to make excuses. The Lord says, well, I can defeat it. But you have to show up for the battle. You've got to be there. You've got to put your foot on it. And if you're willing to do that, I'll give you the victory.